Welcome to Legacy Listens, where we have honest conversations with thought leaders in the financial services industry and share steps on how to build wealth intelligently. You'll hear from experts in investment management, business succession, family office services, and income and estate tax planning. Enjoy the latest episode beginning now. Welcome back to Legacy Listens. This is Matt Culp, partner and senior advisor with Legacy Planning Partners. Thanks for joining us today. We have our special guest, Wayne Herring. Great to see you, Wayne. I appreciate your time. Wayne is the founder of Business Builders. Uh, Wayne is my personal uh, business coach. Uh, Wayne coaches business owners uh, and their key people, uh, which is going to be our topic today of coaching high performers. Uh, Wayne is also a husband, father, and a son. And uh, one of the things I love about Wayne is obviously uh, does a phenomenal job business coaching, but he's been in the shoes. Uh, Wayne worked for nine years at Preferred Warranties, which was a family owned business. He helped to grow that business and that business ended up uh, transitioning two different times, which Wayne was a part of. Uh, and you've been in the shoes, you've, you've had the experience and, and you've seen the good, bad, and the ugly as, you know, as we've talked about and, uh, when it's just great to have you and, uh, welcome. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me. Look forward to serving in any way that I can. Excellent. Thank you. So we, I guess where I'd like to start is, is we met, uh, roughly a little over two years ago and, uh, when we met or when we were introduced, uh, we started working together, not necessarily on a coaching one-to-one basis, which which we do now, but we started meeting based around a five-year plan, around a five-year vision that you helped me and what I call my right-hander, my key person, Corey Neath, you helped us to design really working backwards, reverse engineering that five-year plan. And from that five-year plan, we then moved into we each moved into uh, your 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 business builders uh, camp into in our into our, our groups which we work in on a weekly basis and then also to attend your quarterly business builder camps um, and so I've been able to see you in action and and uh, we also recently uh, performed a workshop together where we had a group of business owners and we were talking about their high performers and we weren't talking about them. So I want to be very intentional that this is this is about coaching high performers, but business owners, we're not talking about you. Don't take that the wrong way. All right. We're talking about the most important people in your organization that that are your I call them your right handers. It's it's the people that, that you rely on and it's the people that help us to avoid that that hub and spoke where everything has to run through the business owner right? Where we have this team that is a cohesive team. So uh, we're going to spend our time there. So when I just want to ask you, the first question is, how do we, or how do you identify what a high performer is? Sure. Well, one of the first things when you had that group of your clients who are all CEOs, business owners, when you had them out here to the to the farm, one of the first things that I did was draw on the whiteboard a stick figure um, because stick figures are easy to draw and I can handle it. But the the stick the stick figure I drew was to represent a high performer in their world, somebody who they were um, depending on, somebody who they were interested in helping develop, grow, achieve the things they want. And so that stick figure is important here too. So you ask the question, how do I identify a high performer? So for everybody listening, if you even were to take out a piece of paper and maybe you're driving and that's you, you can just picture it in your mind, but the, the stick figure that you would draw on a piece of paper or think of in your mind represents these other uh, humans that are either currently working for you or who may in the future. And a big part of what I try to help, you know, you and other business owners uh, to do is, is to think of people, right? Like really, really think of people. 
really bring them to mind and really quiet the voices in your inside your head which we all have that we have thinking going on all the time and 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 I want business owners to to think of those other people quiet the voices quiet the noise and and really get centered on them and focus on them and and I think some of the answers how to identify high performers I, I don't know who said this right but there's this statement of I'll know it when I see it um, it's not all gut but 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 a lot of it is like you know like if if you're really honest about the people on your team if you're honest with yourself and if you can quiet all that noise you have an idea of who your high performers high potentials are now that would be to just you know quickly go through them might not be deep enough because we could gloss over some people that for some reason or another you have a bias against them or maybe it didn't start off well so i'm not saying don't go deeper but if you just pause and get quiet and think of um, individuals, bring individuals to mind, Fred, Sally, Joe, um, Jane, if I if I bring them to mind and really get present to who they are, I, I have a pretty good idea of who high performers are. So it's one answer. My second answer is, I, and you're going to ask me something like this, and I jotted down, there, there's a, a wealth of knowledge, of course, in books and out there. And there's a couple of frameworks I'm thinking of that could help you make a checklist when you think about these people. Mm -hmm. And and one of those is uh, Gino Wickman, who wrote Traction and who is the, you know, was the founder of EOS, which, which is very popular right now as a business coaching system. Um, he They have this, this people analyzer and it gets it once it has the capacity. Do they get it? Do they want it? Do they have the capacity? And you could go through individuals and think about that check mark. You can just, you know, check mark. Do they get it? Do they want it? Do they have the capacity? And uh, another one is Pat Patrick Lanchoni, you know, who wrote many books, The Advantage, Four Obsessions of a Executive, et cetera. You know, he says he looks for people who are humble, hungry, and smart. Mm -hmm. And we can, I believe we can use those existing frameworks to look at and get present to those individual people on our team and ask, are they, who is humble, hungry, and smart? And if I don't know, then, you know, I need to spend some time with them or observe their work or see what they say, or what kind of questions do they ask? What do they come to me with? Do, can I can tell that, that they're engaged? Do they want more? Are they figure it out people? That's another thing. Um, Dave Curlin is a guy in the sales training world, but he has an assessment that is used for salespeople. And there's a finding on that assessment, which I'm not a partner right now. I, I did that early in my coaching career, but he said we were looking for figure it out factor. And so if everybody listening right now says, you know, you know what, who, who on my team can just figure stuff out, who has the figure it out factor, that would be another way to identify high potential people, high performers. So you bring up a, a, a good question in my, I guess, in my mind is that, you know, there's high performers. And then I think about key employees and mm -hmm. based upon what you just said, they could, they could be two different people, mm -hmm. meaning that a high performer, like, like I'm just thinking about the progression of how some one can grow in an organization. Like you said, like basically the, that it factor or the, uh, the humble, hungry, and smart. So I, I, I guess one of my questions here was, you know, is, is a high performer someone who's already proven that they can do it? Is it or is it really somebody who you you see has that potential or is it both? I mean, what do you see in your experience with with the right handers group or the 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 high performers of business owners that you've worked with? Yeah, right. And so words and terminology <laughs> are important and people can interpret it different ways, but there there's somebody coming to mind. There's there's a a guy who is on a leadership team of somebody who's in our business builders group and he is fair mid 30s. So somewhat young, I'm 47 and you know, you're you're somewhat close to my age, Matt. So this guy's, you know, 34-ish maybe. So a little bit behind in terms of years. And he's only been working in this particular business for 
about two years. Um, but he is he is somebody who is going to help move that business forward. He already has helped move the business forward. He has already gone out and found innovative ways to solve problems and things that they were struggling with um, for, for a long time. He already has shown that he is willing to get uncomfortable and learn new things and lean into that discomfort such that he can grow and take on more responsibility than he does, than he already has, right? Um, so what I'm thinking is, like, as, as a distinguishing characteristic is, yeah, you're talking about, it would be great to have a whole team of people who are humble, hungry, and smart. And we want to have a whole team of people who get it when it has the capacity and we're solving for that all the time and watching it. And then there are those certain people who are, are going to go even beyond that. And I think that they are going to um, not just do a really great job in, in the role that they've been given, but th- you can tell that they're constantly um, being proactive and they're, they're looking for even more. And they um, are, are thinking outside of the box and even bigger than where they're, than where they're at now. Now, I think, you know, the other thing you brought up is do they have to already be there? And then we go look for them and bring, bring them in. Maybe that's the case, or maybe they're homegrown. Some people are homegrown and some people you identify that they just, they have that extra something. Um, I, it happens both ways uh, in businesses where they seek to hire somebody like that or where they, are developing somebody internally. Thank you. So, so Wayne, how do you coach? So you mentioned one thing that you see consistent with high performers is they want more, right? So more means they're, they're continuing. I think of it being they're, they're moving upward. They're continuing to prove that they can handle that next level. Like they want to continue to climb. They're motivated and they're focused. And I'm thinking about a small business that oftentimes that may mean for the owner, the owner may need to give up control and or some responsibilities in order for that high performer to continue to grow. And while that sounds easy, like a no brainer, right? Like who, Hey, who wouldn't want that until you're in the shoes and it's like, wait a second, I, I, I gotta give, I gotta give that up. Or how do I know what to be giving up? From a coaching perspective, how do you how do you address that with a high performer who wants who wants more, along with the business owner who may be a little hesitant to give up some of that control? Well, again, I, I think it goes back to the this stick figure idea. <laughs> it, it, it's just how I see things, right? So, mm-hmm. in that case. Where that would start is I would have on a piece of paper, which, you know, I have one handy. It it would be one stick, stick figure is this uh, high, high performing uh, employee who, who wants more, as you said. And the other one is the owner. And in my kind of kind of thoughts and mental processing, I'm seeing both of them as unique individuals. If I've had the opportunity to work with both of them, or maybe the owner is just relating to me what they're hearing from the other person. And I mean, I'm going to have those, those two sick figures uh, written down and then I'm writing out uh, attributes, things I've heard them say um, things that, that they want. And, you know, I'm looking for like interferences interferences where they might run into conflict with each other, but I'm also looking for how in essence, they both want the same thing. Like, like what's in it for both of them, what's in it for both of them, if they can come together. And then, and and so I may literally do that. You know, if I were working with you one-on-one and we were talking about somebody on your team, um, I would be doing that. And I'd be verbally saying out loud, just like I'm doing right now, what it is I'm looking for and what I'm seeing. And naturally because, I'm holding this space 
and creating that that visual, you would start uh, thinking about it yourself, and you you Matt, the business owner in that case, would start to verbally say uh, what what it is that you're thinking. And you would what 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 I observe happens when I'm coaching uh, business owners like that is they start to solve the problems, like or or they start to see where they're perhaps not giving enough space to that key employee to move ahead and grow. But we we have and there's this thing like um, you can't take anybody any deeper than you've gone yourself is a coaching phrase. So part of the work that I do with business owners is to help get them to be comfortable talking about the stuff that's in their head, talking about the fears, talking about, you know, who will I be if I no longer have these responsibilities? Mm -hmm. And and by talking about it, we'll often um, allow it to be released so that you can do things like I, like you've done recently, like, you know, go on extended uh, we talked about this earlier today. You went on a sabbatical uh, for a long period of time, and you were able to do that partially because you cleared some of those obstacles in your your head out, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know if I'm answering your question directly, but but time and space and processing with somebody else is how you clear out a lot of those blocks, I think. Yeah, no, I, I would completely agree. And and I would also add to that, uh, I think one of the, the very important pieces of work that that you've helped helped our team with is coming back to where we started, which is that five-year plan. That that vision of where we wanted to get to at a future point in time and started to work backwards. And you know, that was that was two years ago. And it's hard to believe that how fast two years went. But man, to just sit here as we're talking to think about the the growth, not just not just I'm not talking about revenue. I'm talking about like personal and individual growth as far as like how our conversations have changed over time to understand our strengths and maybe the things we're not so good at and keeping each other accountable to that. And and that has all been, I mean, obviously I'm coaching with you on a weekly basis. And so is Corey. And it's, it's our vision continues to stay in that five-year plan. And I think about, would we have been able to grow if we didn't start back two years ago with that five-year plan? Mm-hmm. It, you know, how might that journey be different if we didn't have that as kind of our, our, uh, our, our, uh, uh, looks like a roadmap. Out. It's a yeah, roadmap. roadmap. It's like a blueprint. If you're building yeah. a house, right. The, mm-hmm the five-year work that you did, which you did some of that before I met you, you were already working on that, which by the way, um, I think a lot of folks try to write out a three-year vision or a five-year vision or a three or five-year plan and think like, I'm just going to, you know, do it. I'm just going to write it down. And it's not like that. It's a creative process. My daughter's an artist. And when I watch her painting, uh, so there's a beautiful landscape hanging kind of over my shoulder here, which is of my wife's family camp in Maine. And it's a wide canvas that she did with oil paints. Right. But she didn't just start painting that on the canvas. She uh, has been to this place and she's experienced it. And my wife who wanted, my wife commissioned the the painting. She was the patron in this case. Did I say it? Patron, patron. I don't know. Um, she gave Michaela these pictures, um, snapshots of different times of the year and different places on this big landscape painting. And then my daughter started sketching with a pencil and paper and looking at the picture, sketching. Then she actually takes uh, and does it in today's world. She does a digital um, drawing where she's working to get the colors right. And that gives her a clue for how to match the oil paints to the colors that she did on the digital. And so, and that's multiple layers of oil paint that go onto a painting like that before it's ever finished and finalized. And so when you were doing that five-year vision, I remember one of the things we did is I'm sitting in this chair here at the farm and you were out here and I asked you to close your eyes and I, right. And it was, it's a little bit, like 
maybe uncomfortable if people haven't done a visioning exercise like that before. But I ask you to, you know, go to a place five years in the future. And then, and I was taught this by other people, speak about how things are five years from now. This is how things are, not how they're going to be, but how they are. And then I was able to ask you some questions like, okay, well, if that's how things are, well, how did you do that? And think back to 20, you know, 21, I guess it was, you know, hey, Matt, so here you are, it's 2026. Think back to 2021. What were the things that had to happen to put that? Well, that is like, you know, my daughter working on that oil painting. It's it's just a, it's a work in progress. So yeah, you did the hard work to get a roadmap. And then for sure, you have these people that are high performers that are part of it. And they need to be part of that vision. And you kind of always are checking against the roadmap to help them to to grow and um, develop them. And yeah, it kind of all the the structure and the engineering type stuff fits with the human art of working with a person who is going to be required if that plan is ever going to become reality. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. All right, Wayne, our, our final question here. So you've you've been in the shoes to grow an organization and to transition an organization uh, multiple times. Uh, you, you successfully coach business owners and you successfully coach their, like I say, their key people or their right-handers. So you've gotten a lot of experience over your years. So, so my question to you is, what is one piece of advice you have listened to in, in all of your experiences that that you would share with either that right-hander that's looking to engage their business owner on how they can get to the next level or or that business owner who is looking to identify either their high performer or help their high performers get to that next level. What's that one piece of advice that that you would share with us today? No pressure or anything, just one piece, huh? Yeah, just one piece. <laughs> A lot, well, sometimes what I or anybody else would give as one piece of advice is reflective of things that are going on in the moment or things that they're, the, the framework they're looking at. And it, there's there's a consistent thing that I would, would always come back to. But right now, I've been reading a book um, by Michael Singer called The Untethered Soul. and untethered soul is a deeper psychological um, book and it's inviting us to look in and see if we could untether our soul to see how we could um, free up our our thinking and our creativity and not worry so much about what other people think about us now that doesn't mean like go out and be like hey I'm just I'm not worried about what other people think about me it's not that like it's um but it, it's it's going deeper so that my fears uh, don't hold me back. And, it, and if I can start to look inside, like in that way, then I can also start to understand other people around me. So it goes back to that. I can't take anybody else any deeper than I've gone myself. And if there's a right hander, you said, what if there's a right hander who would like to help their owner grow? Well, they're going to have to, they they are really going to have to think about their owner and, and bring their owner to mind and understand that they are a living, breathing human with desires and fears and a history and they're a stick figure. And what does that owner want? What is that owner trying to create? How can I ask a question from a place of pure service um, and not, you know, and, and not let my own head trash get in the way? So, so the, whether you're in sales or whether you're an owner or whether you're one of those right handers, I think anything that you can learn about human nature and anything you can learn about yourself um, is, is going to help you be successful. Outstanding. Thank you, Wayne. Wayne Hearing, sincerely appreciate your time today. Uh, thank you for, for listening. If you'd like to reach out to Wayne, learn more about, uh, Wayne and, and uh, business builders, please check out businessbuildercamp.com. Also, Wayne is very active on LinkedIn. You can check out Wayne at, uh, uh, at Wayne Herring on LinkedIn. And I know he'd be happy to talk to you and help uh, 
uh, help you to be able to, to move forward. So thank you again, Wayne. Have a great day. Yeah, thanks, Matt. That's all for today's episode of Legacy Lessons. Thank you for joining us. For questions, visit us at legacy-online.com where you'll find more content and information. If you enjoyed today's discussion, consider subscribing to receive future episodes or sharing this episode with a friend.